very happy to introduce with us um, Balakanda Krishnan. Um, he's the COO of uh, SSE, and uh, he has exciting things to share with us. Uh, Balakanda, the floor is yours. Happy to have you. Hi, Michael. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so my hearty thanks to Tayang News Team, especially to you, Michael, and uh, Shravan as well for having invited me as a keynote speaker in this esteemed conference. Yeah, so uh, can we go ahead then? Shall I share the screen? Can you see my screen? Yep, just go into presentation mode, then everything's fine. Uh, maybe switch, um, because at the moment we can see your notes. You have to go to the top and simply say, um, Is it okay? Uh, no, you have to go to display settings actually, and then uh, click um, the other. Oops. Yeah, now, now we don't see you. Click on the um, on the um, on the little button. But yeah, the problem is maybe maybe go into presentation mode once again. Yes. Because you have two screens, and then you have to go to display settings. I believe. Min, is that correct? Uh, at the top. A little bit more to the left, not end slide, display settings. Can anyone help? Maybe Shravan um, or um, maybe Min, can you help? Udaya? Yeah, yeah. yeah hello, Dr. Rashman. Is this okay? No, you have to change yeah, the display. Please click, you have on the left the button. Do you see you have left the button? You have some buttons. The fourth one, yes. the yeah, the left left one. Okay. No, 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 no. The the left from the the cycle button. The fourth one, right on the right, right. Yeah, this one. Okay. Uh no, sorry, it's not this one. Uh, well, click uh, ch uh, click the on the top display setting, on the top. Okay. Click. Uh, uh yes, click this one. Swap. Yes. Swap. Yes. Okay. Fine. Yeah, All know. right. <laughs> Nothing is as easy as it seems. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of uh, confusion. Okay. Cool. So let me start. Uh, so once again, thanks to the uh, Tang News team, uh, especially uh, Shmela and uh, Shravan for having invited me for this keynote conference. Uh, today, I will actually take you through the, uh, the selection criteria for cell production equipments, considering the low cost, and more specifically, I'll be talking about the top one technology, which is more relevant in the current situation. Okay, so the agenda of the talk is pretty clear. Uh, so I will be uh, taking you through uh, the first with the uh, management vision of integrated PV manufacturing. Then I will take you through the evolution of technology change from PERC to TOPCON. And then I will explain about uh, the basics of the TOPCON process. And then uh, I will uh, explain about the PERC to TOPCON uh, process differentiators, which is mainly focused on the tunnel oxide deposition and the silicon layer deposition. Subsequently, I will talk about what is called this low cost option for metallization. And in the end, I will try to summarize the key findings. Okay, so uh, this is basically um, uh, our management's vision. Indosol is basically a special project vehicle of Shady Sai Electricals Limited and planning to set up multi gigawatt integrated manufacturing plant right from mining of quartz to modules along with the glass plant and the overall plant capacities in phases are 20 gigawatts of the upstream 
by upstream what we call as this metallurgical grade silica and polysilicon and uh, 15 gigawatt of ingot wafering then 10 gigawatt of cell 10 gigawatt of module along with 2000 tons per day of glass so the basic process starts with actually mining of quartz and it gets converted to metallurgical grade silicon and metallurgical grade silicon is basically 98 to 99% pure silicon, which gets further purified to what is called as a polysilicon, uh, which is for the solar grade, we typically use from 8N to 10N. Uh, so we use this polysilicon as an ingot charge material for growing the ingots. So ingots are drawn and sliced into wafers, and these wafers are subsequently used in processing of solar cells. And finally, the cells are converted to module. So this is an overview. So this slide actually explain about uh, the hierarchical steps which are actually involved from a product which starts basically in a lab and ends up in a fab in a multi-stage of R&D to mature manufacturing. So it all primarily starts with what is called as proof of concept in a lab scale, it, it gets subsequently gets into a pilot scale. Uh, further, it gets tied up with an industrial partner for high volume manufacturing and large area processing, where its key performance index like throughput, yield, efficiency, cost of ownerships are all evaluated. Finally, it gets into the mass production. And in the end, it reaches the process maturity for continuous improvement until its potential limit. So uh, the TopCon is relatively a new technology, which, discovered, which was discovered by Fraunhofer ISC Germany and coined this name back in 2013 itself. The process root as such was extremely popular and successful that um, from lab to fab, it got established so quickly uh, compared to what Perk has shown its presence from R&D to manufacturing stage. So this has become very useful when a manufacturer wants to upgrade from PERC to TopCon, mainly due to the fact that it has only fewer extra processing steps in the manufacturing line. And typically TopCon uh, yields an extra delta of 2% higher cell efficiency in a high volume production with large size areas, typically 182 mm squared, as reported by Jinko recently. And TopCon cell cost is in very close competition with PERC cell cost compared to any other cell technology. So this table actually summarizes the key differences between PERC and TopCon. While there is a great potential and room for further improvements in costs, dollar per watt peak, the efficiency watt is actually dictating the whole market scenario. The silver consumption is slightly on the higher side for top form, as you see in the table, but we are seeing similar such situations for PERC at least four or five years back and has come down to what it is being reported now. So top form has almost over 20 gigawatts plus of uh, install capacity and uh, several hundreds of gigawatts is being planned in the coming years. So with respect to the process flow of TopCon, there are various TopCon routes which has been followed by different companies, different research institutes. And what you see here is a, a very generic process flow. The majority of the steps which are different from PERC are basically the boron diffusion using the uh, BCL3 as a source dopant, tunnel oxide deposition of silicon oxide, uh, which can be done in situ or ex situ depending on the method that you wanted to use. Then comes the actual polysilicon deposition where both in situ and ex situ doping options are possible. So in the coming slides, I will go in detail about the tunnel oxide deposition and the polysilicon deposition to understand how TopCon is actually different from PERC. So, there are actually uh, several routes existing in the tunnel oxide deposition. 
uh, for a thickness ranging between 1.5 to 2 nanometers. Uh, I have basically summarized the most common methods that is being used by most manufacturers, which are tabulated here. You see thermal oxidation, plasma enhanced chemical liquid deposition, atomic layer deposition, and bed benches. Of this, two most important ones are thermal oxidation and plasma enhanced chemical liquid deposition. Uh, so it is basically because of the inherent performance which can offer for the top one technology. Although one would think that wet benches are most in, in, inexpensive method, but the performance is not that great. And the passivation quality is also slightly moderate and also requires effluent treatment plant. So uh, in, most, in most of the situation for the top one process, 70% uh, of the people use thermal oxidation as their um, key thing. And next comes the PCVD. In case of uh, silicon deposition technology, uh, there are many types of deposition available for depositing this polysilicon. And I have summarized the most used by the manufacturers. And of the summarized deposition technologies, which are shown here, 95% market share is mainly for what is called as LPCVD, low pressure chemical liquid deposition, as it is already well proven technology in the semiconductor industry and offers excellent uniformity and absolutely a pin, pinhole free surface. While this technology has good performance, but when it comes to quartz coat lifetime, it becomes very cumbersome uh, because the lifetime of the quartz coat is extremely less in the case of LPCVD. In the case of PCVD, we see that it's very well established in the PV industry already, mainly for the uh, passivation and anti-reflection coating. Uh, the only issue that uh, PCVD suffers is blistering issues for thicker layers greater than 100 nanometers. Apart from this, dust formation is also becoming a big problem, uh, but many groups are already working and PCVD is already catching up with respect to the competition with LPCVD. But for the moment, we see that 95% of the manufacturers have their production in with LPCVD more than PCVD. While actually I explained about the different stages of technology products from lab to fab, uh, it's apparent that PCVD, APCVD still actually are in the entry level of industrialization. While LPCVD has already an installed capacity of 18 gigawatt plus and most preferred choice for all the manufacturers. Although recently many manufacturers have shown interest in the PCVD based polysilicon deposition because of the want of higher throughput and performance, but it's still not proven, or at least the data is still not yet public. It's still in the industrial feasibility stage. So um, this is a techno commercial analysis between PERC and Topcon. Um, the wet process basically consists of alkaline texture plus chemical based uh, edge isolation, then glass removal of both PSG as well as BSG, plus ozone cleaning, plus the single side etching of the polysilicon layer. And if you see the graph I have shown here, the total cost of ownership of the wet chemical process for the top one routes is slightly higher, mainly due to the requirement of additional glass etching, then single side etching, which is the polysilicon and the cleaning process step. With respect to uh, the diffusion and annealing process, it involves bocal as well as BCL3 doping plus selective emitter doping plus annealing. So here the extra, cross, extra cost for the process step is basically um, the BCL3 has a higher uh, uh, cycle time, which is typically around uh, 200 plus minutes when it compared to POCAL is close to 90, 95 minutes. So this adds an extra cost actually. Uh, with respect to passivation process, you have thermal oxidation plus LPCVD polysilicon deposition 
plus PCVD aluminum oxide, amorphous silicon nitride on the front, and amorphous silicon nitride on the rear. So the extra cost here is mainly because of the thermal oxidation as well as the LPCVD polysilicon deposition. The costs are actually mentioned in the right, where you see a comparison between PERC and Topcon Exide 2 and Topcon Inside 2. In the case of Topcon Inside 2, the cost is slightly lower because you're trying to combine two processes in one equipment. The International Technology Roadmap for Photovoltaics has already predicted that the copper plating can be a, a greater contender in the next few years, mainly for the fact that silver has a very limited supply and very high cost, and there is always a dependency on volatile silver pricing. While copper plating can offer lead-free and narrow geometries, uh, and they promise uh, cost of ownership reduction of close to 45%. Uh, also, the, the, when, when compared to the silver as well as the copper plating, basically in case of uh, the silver screen printing, the capex is low while the opex is high, but for the copper plating, it's the other way around. The capex is initially high, but the opex is low because of the usage of copper. So, uh, but with increasing volumes, the capex for copper plating can become lower at some point. So some of the key criteria, apart from equipment and raw materials, which are uh, needed for the selection of advanced solar cell production for lower cost can be, uh, basically uh, you have to look more into the efficiency percentage, yield percentage, overall equipment effectiveness, cost of ownership, then process capability and process performance. And we need to ensure that the final yield actually includes A grade cell percentage, B grade cell percentage, breakage percentage, rework, uh, electroluminescence inspection rejects, electrical reject percentage, and final optical rejects. And apart from this, while um, um, while while designing the factory, uh, what it used to be an optional feature in the olden days has become a mandatory add-ons or AGVs, uh, MES, end-to-end -end product traceability, maximum inline metrology automated inspection at every cluster, central FMCS and the DMR. So uh, subsequent to this equipment, uh, supply strategy becomes extremely crucial when it comes to what is known as the risk versus impact analysis, wherein the strategy is extremely helpful in improving your sus supply sustainability and the profit margins. For example, if you take the case of specialty gases like uh, silane, ammonia, TMA, BCL3, these are typically imported and considered as a bottleneck uh, items and supply can be mainly secured using long-term contracts. If you go for the strategic items like wafers, where it's better to have a, a partnership or a JV, joint venturership, or to have your own in-house manufacturing. Uh, for non-critical items like spares, screens, chemicals, bulk gases, uh, it is extremely useful if you simplify and automate the procurement process through the SAP. And for the leverage items like uh, silver paste, it's better to exploit the purchasing power, minimize the cost through the auction and negotiations. So to summarize this talk, uh, existing cell manufacturers mostly are either converting their perk into top one lines or directly investing on top one technology. And three process steps which are to be focused while the uh, equipment selection are tunnel oxide. Uh, as we have seen in, in, the, in the earlier slides, uh, thermal grown oxide is a clear winner where you get excellent passivation. And next comes the PCVD. The thermal Oxide tool passivation is excellent with lower COO compared to PCVD. In the case of uh, silicon deposition, LP, LPCVD has a huge market share, close to 95%, and LPCVD has already proven in the mass manufacturing, while PCVD market is still catching up. LPCVD inside to cost of ownership is lower compared to 
LPCVD XI2 first of ownership. And in the case of metallization, copper plating can become a great contender to reduce cost of ownership compared to silver screen printing. Thank you, one and all. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bala. I just want to introduce uh, myself. I'm Shravan Chanduri, technology head at Tayang News. So I would like to uh, co-moderate the session along with Michael. So uh, Dr. Bala, it's a very nice presentation. Great insights into the selection criteria. Um, I got uh, two questions here. So since you are really operating are trying to operate from India. So when do you think uh, there will be a transition towards the manufacturing of uh, advanced solar cells in India? Um, actually, India is still lagging behind uh, China, mainly uh, for the reason that India is still becoming a, a very cost sensitive market. So that's the reason why uh, many of these existing man, uh, manufacturers uh, are in the process of converting from multi-lines to PERC at this point of time. However, the, uh, the new newcomers for the solar industry, uh, they are directly going for uh, TopCon or even HJT. Uh, so for sure that uh, in next two years, we will see many uh, cell manufacturers coming with, with uh, advanced cell manufacturing. So now, uh, you know, you are one of the pioneers in, uh, are going to be the pioneers of uh, Indian PV manufacturing. So you are basically trying to do the, the entire supply chain. Uh, and uh, so, but, uh, you know, do you also think there could be a chance of starting production equipment manufacturing um, in in India, because you know today we are talking about uh, production equipment. So, so what's your thoughts on having a production equipment base in India? Yeah. So India's key growth is in the energy security, and in in order to make it happen, equipment manufacturing will definitely have to start at some point. So, like uh, PLI, this production linked incentive, the government of India should also uh, come up with uh, another scheme like ELI, uh, equipment linked incentive uh, for both solar and semiconductor space. And I'm pretty sure this is likely to happen in a year or two. And, and, and for sure, India will become a, a big success in the near future with respect to equipment manufacturing as well. Okay, fingers crossed. Thanks a lot uh, for this uh, very nice uh, keynote presentation. So uh, please stay, uh, and if there are any questions, uh, you know, in the chat box, uh, please answer them. And anyway, I think we will again going to talk at the end for the panel, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks again.